Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to take this radio and this antenna and we're gonna connect them together for some strange reason. Let's get to it. This little tiny box is the magic connecting piece that makes it all happen. This is the WR12 wideband receiver from Zygu. And it comes with some really cool stuff to make it work, to make it do its magic trick. So here it is, it's a cool little metal box. Inside is the transverter, I guess it's the reverter because it doesn't transmit. This is only a receiver and it enables a frequency expansion on the radio. And this plugs into that socket on top. We knew when we saw the first glimpse of these radios that there was something magical going on here. And then when I got this thing in my hands and took this cover off and it was a solid block of metal underneath and there was clearly no room inside to do anything, I was a little disappointed. We also have this one on the bottom, so I'm still waiting for some magic there. But what they did with this is they want you to bolt it on up top here like this. So two bolts replace those two screws. I need to check first to see if this needs a certain version of firmware or not. Fix the seal of the sales unit. That's your warranty card. We don't do warranties here. However, if you get this thing from my friends over at Radiotity, they take excellent care of their customers. Working frequency expansion from 54 to one, 54 megahertz to one gigahertz. Nice. You'll see the WR12 logo. We'll have to look for that. I'll show you how to get it connected. And then it'll show you the receive sensitivity here. If you guys are interested in nerd stats like that, then take a pause and take a read. It does not say it needs any new firmware, but we will know right away if we don't see the WR12 logo on the screen up there. And if not, we'll do a firmware upgrade because I know how to do that. It looks like they give you all the parts that you need. So step one is gonna to be to use the included tool and remove the two screws that are there. And then we put two new screws in their place. So I'm gonna get these loose and get them removed. And then this plate will need to get stored somewhere. Does it fit in the bag? Oh, nice. It fits in the bag and the bag seal. So this can go in the bottom of your go kit for this radio and not be lost. Because otherwise it's gonna take care of your resale value. So. It fits in there pretty good. There is a protrusion and a recess to use the technical terms. And you put the protrusion into the recess and it sits there. It's not falling off or anything, but I want to put these screws on and these are thumb screws. So it will be easy enough to remove. Actually, speaking of, since these are thumb screws and I don't need the tool anymore, put those screws in there with the cover plate. And now I can return this to stock if I wanted to. This screw isn't as easy to get in as this screw. There's a little like a uh, hex nut or something underneath of the thumb screw portion there. Yeah, this one screw just goes in easier. Interesting. Not a deal breaker, but something to note. And there isn't really any reason to over tighten these or anything. And if you do go too far, you're going into your radio. So that might get better over time, but you can tell that one of those screws sticks up farther than the other screw. Just something I noticed, not a big deal. This is, what do they say this is? This is RG316 Flex 50 ohm coax cable. And it's fairly obvious that there's your BNC port and there is your SMA port. And if you put it on backwards, for example, if you put the BNC up here, you can only plug this into itself or get an adapter. Why would they do that? So there's a reason why they did it was to make it easier. This 90 degree adapter has a little bit of a swivel built into it. Well, I mean, it's got a complete swivel built into it. Not a little bit, a, a real live swivel built into it. So you can get that out of your way. And then over here, this is where it gets a little confusing is with this USB cable. There is a USB port on here. That side's fairly obvious, but then there are two USB ports over there and you want the radio to host the receiver as opposed to the radio being a device attached to your computer. Terminology is fun, especially when the ports are all the same. So either way, we've got it all plugged in. Now I need my coax and that coax that I showed you from the antenna on the roof is PL259 flavored. So I need an adapter, or I guess in my case, a set of adapters, but luckily I have a set. I've got one that's exact somewhere, but I can't be, I can't be arsed to go get it as my down under friend says. And now, Two moment of truths incoming. One, does it have a charge on the battery? It looks like it does. And two, does it say WR12 when it boots up? We've got power through the USB device there. There it is, WR12. Nice. And we're getting that power on in it message. 
which usually means I've got Bluetooth or Wi-Fi enabled. I'll turn off the tuner because it's a receive antenna, so I don't need the tuner necessarily. It, it actually does help a little bit, but I can't imagine that we'd be able to tune it. We'll try it anyway. Do I have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth turned on? Uh, it is on. I don't want it on. I want it off. All right, Wi-Fi is off. Bluetooth is off. Let's do a reboot real quick. Look at that noise. Woo! Every RV park has a different set of interesting things going on with it. So we're rebooting and seeing if we get that power on in it. it like, does this require a power on in it? pause like the looked like it came up faster to me but it still says wr12 so that power on in it was because of the thing the thing with the thing the wi-fi and bluetooth thing all right so now what do we get here let's change the band that's 17 meter hand band we're used to that 15 12 10 6 there we go fm broadcast Interesting. That radio just reconfigured itself down to 20 meters and back. So if you turn this knob over here, you're turning faster. Let's get this down to an even number. There we go. And that makes it easier for tuning in FM radio stations like this. I'm trying to find a good strong one. I don't, I'm not from the area, so I'm hunting, but this is what you would do. You'd, uh, you'd start listening for signals. There we go. We get a nice strong signal. It sounds really good. That they can't even say to a person, God loves you. Because they think, well, what if I say God loves you to one of the non-elect who's been predestined to hell? That is super clear on Broadcast FM once you get a good strong signal. All right, what is the next band that we get? 121 megahertz? 121 megahertz is going to be really close to air band and it automatically switches into AM for you. It has just switched again, randomly out and back in. Let me know if yours does that. Maybe they'll have a firmware update for that. While we're doing that, let's uh, system, system info. This is the firmware I'm running is January 11th and January 14th of 2025 and version 106. So there might be a newer version of the firmware out there that fixes that. And now that I'm on AM in Airband, we're switching by this middle point where over here we were switching by the four on FM broadcast. And how does the fast button change that? The fast button doesn't change that portion at all. This is still going up by that middle digit. All right, what is the next band up? 145, so there's your two meter FM. Let's see, 146900 is a local repeater. We're gonna tune it in here. And then I'm gonna see if I can get it to work on my two meter transmitter and then hear it over here, 146900. I guess I can go like that and get there faster. All right, there's 146900 on the receive. There's no reason to do tones on the receive. This will accept anything that I send to it. All right, let's do this just to double check. I've got the, the stubby on here, which might also be part of the problem. One, four, six. All right, so I can't raise that repeater. So I'm gonna to change to my signal stick, which is a better antenna. And if I still can't get it from indoors, then I'm going outside. KM9G. Oh, there it is. There we go. That's a squelch of 100. Jeez. KM9G testing the repeater. Yep, so we broke the squelch. Okay, so we were able to break the squelch, but I am going to do this simplex because I can, and then I can kind of control the parameters here. So let's do KM9G. Woo! All right. So now I'm going to take this radio, which is on 146.52, outside of the RV to get it out of the, the sound because what happens is when you transmit, the radio picks up the receive from the Zygu radio, and then you're retransmitting yourself, and that's where you get that echo and that high-pitched squeal, because it happens faster than your voice does and starts to create some nasty feedback. So I'm going to take this radio outside and make a contact so you can hear it on this radio, and I'm going to leave my microphone in here for you. This is KM90 testing on 146.52 Kilo Mic 9 Golf. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1. Test complete. All right, awesome. Let's see what the next band is. 150, that's going to be your local public service. 222, nice. 225, 433 is your 70 centimeter ham band-ish. Let's get you up to 446. Turn the big knob. And on these radios, since we're moving into something where you might want to spin a little faster, underneath of the VFO knob is a little piece of foam, and you can change the friction level this rubber band here on the dial comes off, and then there is a set screw in there. 
So release the set screw, raise the knob up, remove the, the foam friction modifier, or enjoy it the way it is. Totally up to you. I'm just letting you know you've got options. Let me know if yours does that down in the comments. I'll put this on 446. We'll verify we can key up. Because this is kind of a pain. This is way too slow of a movement for something like this. Oh, wait a minute. We're hands. We have tools. Does this work? Let's plug the microphone in. And then can I do... Nope, that's changing to bands. I don't want to do that. I want to do frequency input. Four, four, six, zero, zero, zero. Enter. So it's six zeros. Frequency in input. Four, four, six, zero, 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 zero. Enter. There we go. Now we're on 446, which is that same trick that you can do with one of these guys. Four, four, six, zero, zero. Okay, so now we're on 446. Does it receive? Testing receive on 446. Yep, we've got some receive. We've got a really awesome looking waterfall. Excellent. Now I want to try the tuner. Tuning frequency out of range. Excellent. So they know not to try and tune this. Since you're 446, that's your 70 centimeter ham band. What's next? 455. That's going to get you to the lower end of GMRS and probably all the way up as well. Let's do 462. Five, 465, 525, that's good enough. 462, 525, WRNY, testing. WRNY, 996, testing. WRNY, 996, testing. 900 megahertz, another ham band. 930, 1.8 gigahertz. It said it went to 1,000 megahertz. We're gonna keep going. 3.6, 5.4. I mean, oh, I wrapped around. I'm getting all excited. That's the, that's the 160 meter ham band. And that's the... 900 megahertz hand band. And look, we've got the band map. See the, the purple line? So it'll tell you when you're in the hand band or not. We're not in the hand band. We are in the hand band. I don't know why it doesn't have it on 220. Oh, there we go, because I was not on 220. It, so it'll tell you when you're in the hand bands and when you're not in the hand bands. It remembers my squelch settings. Did you see that? My squelch setting on two meters was 100, so it remembered that. That's why that mute is there. No squelch. And then when we went to airband, it automatically switched to AM. This is FM broadcast. And then we're down to six meters. Pretty slick. We are not supposed to be able to transmit. Um, I do have the full TX option turned on. And that full transmit mod hasn't worked, which is why I haven't put a video out on it yet. Oh, we are transmitting on that. Oh. Can I even hear that? This should not work. Testing, testing, one, two, three. No, I can't hear on that. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Yeah, I can't hear. It acts like it's transmitting, but that doesn't mean it's actually putting power out. We're gonna have to put a power meter on that. I get no relay on it, so it's probably just opening up the audio and showing you the waveform of the audio. Now let's go down to somewhere where it should transmit. And it's gonna, I'm on the wrong antenna. You guys saw the antenna. Let's get close enough. Let's turn on the tuner. That's not the tuner. That's the tuner. We can tune through it. I'm trying to tune a two meter antenna on six meters. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. And we we're actually able to tune a two meter antenna on six meters, nice. Now I gotta do power testing. All right, let's do that. You know, for science. All right, we got the, the old faithful, the MFJ power meter. This is a rebadged Nisei. I'll leave a link in the description down below for you. I like it because it's digital, so it's easy to tell. Like you don't, you don't get to argue with the needle and it's big and easy to see on camera. So this is six meters on a tuned two meter. No, this is six meters on a dummy load. Let's get rid of the tuner. Take the tuner off because it's a dummy load. And all right, it's considering, there we go. There's some power because we're on USB. Let's switch it to FM. Oh, and now we've got SAM. Nice. There we go. Five watt radio, putting now 3.4 watts on FM into a dummy load. Nice. Switch that over to VU. Switch the antenna in the back. Switch the dummy load in the back and push random buttons on the screen. Let's switch this up to, well, can we even transmit there? Oh, we can transmit there. Yep, but no power. That's what I thought. Excellent. All right, so now we're somewhere where we can test. KM9G testing 146519, zero power output. Let's change modes. Wide FM. This is wide FM. This is what I thought. I thought you're just seeing the audio waveform from the microphone onto the screen. AM on 
So it looks like it's transmitting, but there is zero power output, so it's not transmitting. So you get to play around and see what your voice sounds like without actually getting on the air. Not that that's a terribly useful feature, but it's a it's a feature, right? So there's tons of stuff you can do with this. You can have this set up to monitor satellites as they go overhead. You can make this your receive station and have a nice waterfall and you can see the, the Doppler shift going on. You can listen to local repeaters. The radio has memory channels, so you can program in memory channels and hit the scanner. Now you can scan between HF, VHF, UHF, microwave, all the things. That was a two meter antenna on the roof. This isn't shortwave listening because this is all higher stuff, six meters and higher. So you don't really need a terribly large antenna, but you know, more wire equals more signal, right? I will leave some information about this in the description down below for you and also a $15 discount if you are interested over at Radiodity. I, I actually, I don't make a lot of recommendations, but I actually do recommend Radiodity because they have fantastic customer support. They seem to actually care and the prices are pretty good. The Zygu WR12, WR12 frequency expansion module for the X6200, the wideband receiver. That's what the WR stands for. Receive only, no transmit, but it does open up a ton of capabilities for the radio and one less thing you need to pack if you're going on a trip and want to explore the, the bands. So if you want to see somebody try and put power out on a receive only receiver, then this is the channel for you. We do full testing of, of products and I have fun doing it and sharing it all with you guys. Then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below the video. And if this isn't your jam, listening to VHF and UHF and higher frequencies on an HF transceiver that's small and portable, then there's a video right over here you might like instead. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.